Chapter 1 The bus ride to L.A. Café was a soul-sucking experience. Amelia Sheffield's head bounced with each pothole as she attempted to doze. She'd never been a morning person, but her boss didn't seem to care. The shop opened at six, and if she wanted a paycheck, she needed to be there in time to get the bread baking and the sandwich fixings organized for the crowd that picked up lunches on the way to work. Never a big meat eater, she found chicken and shredded turkey and sliced roast beef even more difficult to handle at 5.30 in the morning. She stepped off the bus at Sunset and Echo Park, then walked the last three blocks to the shop. L.A. wasn't a pretty city at any time of day, but at least at oh dark thirty it was a bit more calm. She'd walked this route long enough now to have figured out the regulars and locals, and they exchanged sleepy nods as they passed on the sidewalk. Familiar faces, friendly conversation, it was all that kept her at this job. Well, that and the need to eat and pay rent. When the manager switched on the open sign and unlocked the front door, Amelia gathered her resolve and wiped the mope off her face. She began to greet the customers as though they were close personal friends. "'You way too chipper, chica,' Maria told her. "'Ain't gonna find a producer in here, you know. They all eat downtown.' "'Touché,' Amelia admitted. "'But either way, I can't stand the thought of grunting my way through the day and never actually talking with anyone.' Then, in a lowered voice, "'This job is bad enough without my attitude making it worse.' "'You saying my attitude is bad?' Amelia grinned and popped Maria on the shoulder. "'Your attitude? No, chica, you're the picture of optimism.' That started Maria laughing. But despite her best efforts, Amelia could feel the creativity draining from her blood every day that she punched in and then out again eight hours later." Every day she would drag herself to the bus stop and slouch against the shelter, feeling isolated despite the people around her, and she would pray that today would be the day she got an offer for the job she really wanted. To her surprise, her husband Marcus was home when she let herself into their fourth-floor studio, his hair still wet from what was likely a post-jog shower. She hardly ever saw him during the day, he worked so much. Between his tutoring jobs, his surf instructing, and his part-time shifts behind the register at Target, he was rarely home and awake for more than an hour or two at the most. Going for a run was one of the ways Marcus blew off steam. "'Hey, you're home,' she said, leaning against the door and breathing hard. "'Can you believe the elevator is broken again?' She shuffled in, flopped onto the couch, and groaned. "'I am so tired.' You've got to stop going to bed so late. I know, I know. He leaned down and kissed her cheek. Hmm, the heavenly scent of fresh bread and mustard. She smiled. Oh, de hoagie? Bottle it, babe, you'll make a mint. Don't I wish. She leaned over, stretching her back. Remind me again that we're not just killing time. We're not just killing time. Amelia sat up and cocked her head to the side. Yeah, I don't buy it. Marcus gave her a small frown. His ways are not our ways, love, and neither is his timing. We can't see what he's orchestrating behind the scenes. But if God exists out of time, then he doesn't have any timing at all, right? She couldn't help playing devil's advocate, especially when he got all pastorly on her. It triggered a need to prove she was just as smart as he was, even if her theology wasn't as polished. In which case, maybe he just doesn't realize how long we've waited. Marcus laughed. Not as long as some. She sighed. Yeah, you're right. Sorry I'm so impatient. Don't apologize to me. She looked to the ceiling. Sorry I'm so impatient. It's just that I'd much rather be, you know, playing piano like I've been training to do for the last ten years, rather than building sub-sandwiches. But please don't take this as a prayer for patience. It's just an apology. Marcus snickered. Nice. Hey, it's honest. He likes honest, right? She stood. I'm going to take a shower. And wash away all that delicious cold-cut goodness? She laughed. Sorry, babe. I know how much you love your wife smelling like the deli case. He wagged his eyebrows, then looked at the clock and sighed. Guess I'll see you later, then. I'm leaving in ten. She said farewell with a lingering kiss that made her shiver. Just a little preview of later tonight, she said with a wink. Looking forward to it. He kissed the small diamond ring and wedding band on her finger. 
and she turned with a smile for the bathroom, humming Mozart and thinking happy thoughts of her husband. Despite the uncertainty of their futures, Marcus's confidence that God would take care of them comforted her. She loved the stability his faith gave their lives. But alone in the steam, she prayed more seriously. I wish I knew what you were waiting for, she thought toward heaven. It would make it easier, and I wish I had Marcus's faith and patience. I probably should be praying for patience, huh? Even if I could just get some studio work or something, I'd feel so much better. This sandwich gig makes my existence feel positively meaningless.